Trex Remedy 9 Race Shop Limited is one of the new breed of remedies which they've dedicated to purely 650B wheels this year, um, while the Slash is their dedicated Enduro racer on 29ers. So you'll see that it has a properly straight down tube this time around, there's no kinks in it and Trex say that's to keep it as stiff as possible while maintaining the best relationship between strength and weight. For Trek to use their totally straight down tube, they've created what they dubbed their knock block system. This consists of a frame insert, a spacer, a stem, and a dedicated headset, which together, these limit how far you can actually steer the bars around. This means you'll never get the fork round striking the down tube, and hopefully it'll mean as well that your controls, your shifters, and your brakes won't hit the top tube if you should crash in the bar spin. If you're wondering what the Race Shop Limited refers to, it's in reference to the spec. Now, on the bike we've had and on the other Race Shop Limited bikes, you're actually going to get a 160mm fork rather than 150mm fork. So, while you have 150mm travel out the back, you've actually got 160 at the front, which obviously makes it a little more aggressive on the downhills. Trek have actually spec'd a dual position air fork on here, so you can toggle between 130 and 160mm of travel. Unlike the old dual position air, you can actually add tokens to this, so you can change the end stroke of the fork and how progressive it feels. At the rear sits the RockShox Deluxe RT3 Reactive Shock. Both wheels and tyres are from Trex in-house brand Bontrager. You've got the Line Comp 30 rims and the SE4 Team Issue tyres, which are great. In terms of transmission, uh, like we're seeing a lot on this sort of type of bike at this price range, we've got SRAM X1, so 1x11, plenty of range. Uh, and we've also got SRAM brakes in the form of Guide RSs, which are great. Normally this particular bike would come with a Bontrager drop line post. In this case, due to availability, ours actually came with a RockShox Reverb Stealth. Now, let's get on to the riding. Trek actually use what's called the minor link chips, which sit at the top of the seat stays. These can be flipped to give you two usable sets of geometry. Even in the highest setting, it's actually pretty slack. We've got a head angle of 65.6 degrees, so it's quite raked out. We actually found that the proportions of the geometry overall were really good. The bottom bracket doesn't sit too high, although there isn't a lot of drop on it. But ultimately, the first thing you really notice is how active the suspension is and how much grip you can get from what appears to be quite a shallowly treaded tire. While the back end sits quite deep into the travel, it remains really active and actually still quite supportive, so you can still load the bike really hard through the pedals. So when you're driving through turns and linking sections together, it doesn't feel like a mushy bag where you're getting loads of speed sapped with every movement of your body. It's actually really still quite dynamic and fun to ride. At the front of the bike, the Lyric Dual Position Air, while it's still a very, very capable fork, we found that we still needed to use a bit more in terms of air pressure to keep the front end propped up when we were really pushing hard. At high speeds and when it gets really rough, we were finding, while well, the back end of the bike sits down quite low, in order to keep the front end propped up, that extra air pressure, even with tokens in the fork, still meant we lost some of the sensitivity. Now, luckily, the big 2.4 tyre on the front does help sort of flatten some of that sort of trail chander out, but still, the overall balance of the bike isn't as good as it could be. That's not to say it's bad, but when you really are trucking on, you, you do start to notice it. Don't be put off by the fact that Trek have used their in-house brand Bontrager to finish the, the entire bike off really. So the wheels are in fact really, really good quality and the tyres are nicely predictable in the dry. Okay, they're not the best when it gets really muddy because they're not particularly deeply treaded. Overall, combined with the Line Comp 30 rim, the SE4 tyre becomes very predictable, especially in the dry, loose conditions that we spent a good few days on out in Punta Alla. Understandably, that shallow tread in the wet doesn't necessarily dig in as well as it could. They're not bad, but they're not a dedicated mud tire, so they can get a bit slippy at times. So when it comes to climbing, the Trek will bob a little under power, even when seated, but thankfully, the low speed compression lever on the shock isn't that far away, so it's quite easy just to reach down, toggle it, and make things way more efficient. Overall, Although there has been a slight price increase recently, you're still getting a really solid bike for the money. It's a really cohesive package that rides really well and is really, really fun on the trail. Okay, you're gonna to need to spend a little bit of time working on the fork just to try and get the front to rear balance sorted out. But ultimately, it's a great bike to ride and lots and lots of fun.